Man, time has flown by. I remember watching Bleach. <laughs> Yeah, you saw the title of my video, and I'm just gonna be honest here, I don't think Dimension Shifter is a huge problem that people make it out to be. Yes, I do agree that the card is annoying at times, however, I don't see the TCG no. banning or limiting him at the time of recording this video. They might semi-limit Shifter, but I don't think they'll do that either. Basically in this video, I'm going over three points on why I think Shifter is not the problem. Now, let me make a disclaimer. This is my opinion, so I could be wrong here, but the way I see things, there's a bigger problem than Shifter, so I'll be explaining that in the video. So let's get started, shall we? Ask Steve All right. Starting off with point number one, Dimension Shifter's entire purpose. You know, it's rare in Yu-Gi-Oh! history for Konami to tell us why they made a card. That there is only true. A few cases where they told us what a card's purpose is, and... Oh my god, I have to admit, chat. I actually never thought about this. The per No! No! Hold on. To help you stage a comeback against <laughs> some of the fastest strategies that might come from your opponent. AKA, this combo was decks. literally made <laughs> to slow down combo decks. And the combo players just cry about it. Even though, what was the purpose of this card? To slow combo decks down. What does the card do? Slow combo, combo decks combo down. Combo decks down. What's the problem? Unless, unless you're just one of those let me combo Bible thump players. <laughs> like, this is literally the point, the purpose of the card. It's slow combo. Like no one has a problem with Nibiru, so why I got a problem with Shifter? And the team exactly cry about it, combo players. G did give us. I mean, Nibiru was a little different though. I mean, not every deck. Well, pretty much every deck's gonna summon multiple times, but. The thing about Nibiru is those cards still go to the grave. Shifter just banishes everything. And I, I kind of understand that a bit. Because certain decks, I, I mean, Shifter works for your turn too. So it ain't like only your opponent gets Shifter. You get Shifter too. So any card that you use also gets banished as well. So there's only a few cards that can actually benefit from it. But I mean, I do kind of understand it. it. It can be really annoying at times us a reason as to why they created Good Shifter point. in the first place. If you go on the Yu-Gi-Oh! website and look at the 2019 Megaton, in the out. description, you can see them talking about three world premiere cards designed to counter fast-paced combo decks, and one of those descriptions talks about punishing your opponent for graveyard dumping. This is clearly talking about D-Shifter, and I'll be honest here, their logic kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Why, you ask? Well, I feel like I can make an argument so that Graveyard God, combo hate decks hardcore, are the orcs. strongest types of combo decks in the game, as they're using the Graveyard as a second hand. Getting cards into the Graveyard has always been an easy task since DM with Painful Choice, yep. and we have had a lot of powerful Graveyard effects over the years since the GX era with things like Malicious, Level Leader, and much more. Furthermore, some have floating abilities which makes your common board breakers risky to use as you don't want your opponent to gain any advantage back. So Tier. if you don't kill them yep. this turn, Tillaments. they can just rebuild their board on their next turn. Yep, Tillaments some is really good at that. graveyard-based combo decks are Shadals, Burning Abyss, Grass decks, Phantom Knights, and most famously, Tierlemen. This yep. brings me to a question I have for all of you. How are you supposed to be Tier without playing the mirror match and surviving going second? Be you don't. <laughs> no, 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 you, you don't. You don't. That, that's literally the you answer. You really chat. don't. That's what the tier players like. How are you supposed to beat tier if you go second and you're not playing tier? Like you just you don't. You don't. Is 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 really that soul drain macro? I mean, none of those cards work if they go first though. <laughs> like if if they go, yeah, yeah. Unbanned Max C might be an answer. <laughs> Even Max C ain't gonna help because by the time if they if a Tillerman player goes first and they build their board, they're gonna have negates. And you know if they're gonna have negates, they're probably gonna have Ash, they're probably gonna have Call by the Grave. Max C is a moot point when your opponent already builds a board that already has unsurmountable advantage in negation or card disruption. Like that's why Tillerman's was so disliked when it came out. Especially paired with those Ashizu cards. But, like, none of those floodgates do anything if the tier player goes first. Which, by the See? way, you guys remember when Konami was like, we're going to unban Dimensional Fissure. It'll counter tier. Because <laughs> it was terrible. Cool. So that, that's just, like, that's literally an example. Beast deals, you say? 
That is true, but they didn't work all the time since all the cards in tier were at 3. Shifter was one of, if not the best possible chance you had to beat that deck. Now, I know some people are going to comment like this and say that tier is dead so it doesn't matter anymore. However, I have another question. Do you really think Konami is going to stop printing graveyard based decks? Nope. They just made Memento, yeah. which I know isn't too good. But my point is that these types of decks aren't going away. Konami will still print them even after tier limit. In fact, tier kind of shows why D Shifter is necessary, so you can have some sort of comeback against these types of decks. And without Shifter, the format could be a lot worse. Basically, to put this point in short, D Shifter is a necessary evil to give players a chance against graveyard based combo decks. Yep. Before I move to my next point, one argument that bet people will say is that Maxi was specifically designed to counter combo decks like X Saber and Six Samurai, according to Kevin Tewart, which are similar to the combo decks we have today. I did hear about that. I need you guys to watch that. So like her lads, I'm spilling these rats as long as you fill them to the day that I drop, you'll never say that. W3? Which is still kind of bad because skill bets matchmaking. But, you know. $100 DLC? Come on in! The new one is here. I ain't watching this. I have cap. <laughs> I did not know this. <laughs> I heard about this. This was like way, way back in the day. Like way. Oh my back God, in the day. I did not know this. They made this card specifically to counter Samurai and X Saber. <laughs> I did not know this. Clueless? What do you mean, Clueless? You didn't know. No, you didn't know this. That Maxi, because Maxi is a TCG exclusive chat, or it was a a TCG exclusive out of what Storm of Ragnarok. I didn't know yeah. that, like, oh, that's specifically why, because um, the samurai stuff did come out in Storm of Ragnarok. Uh, X Saber was already popping by that point. Yeah, it so really like, was. Yeah, it, it's like, Back okay, we're going to release these combo decks have gotten out of hand. Effect Veiler's not good enough. We need something <laughs> even crazier. <laughs> wow, I learned something today. And that card's still going to retire. Band. So, what's Student the difference between it and Shifter? <laughs> well, to that, here's my answer. Point number two. Dimension Shifter's downside. Yes! I'm not making this up, but people think that D Shifter is just as poorly designed as Max C. True! No one ever went, bro. Every time I bring this up, people just ignore it. When I'm like, well, D Shifter has like a lot of downsides. It, it does. I, I, I will accept monster. that. Because you guys remember, by the way, chat, for anyone gonna say, oh, Cap, the level doesn't matter. You guys do know in the OCG, they used to summon Max C and Sprite. Then they used to bounce it to their freaking hand. hand. Yeah, I, yeah, and they still do that in like Master Duel and stuff. I, and and that's what made it so just so bad. I, I I will say, as annoying as Shifter is, it is somewhat balanced because you can't. The card's basically a garnet if it gets in your hand, and you already have cards that's milling your grave. And on top of that, if you draw it, already have cards in your grave, it's basically useless. And on top of that, it also banishes cards out of your own graveyard. So, you know, unless you're playing like cash or a deck that specifically wants to banish cards, it's 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 not it's not really it's it's highly, highly situational. Like It's only designed to stop a combo deck. And I mean, a really good combo deck at that. So unless your opponent's playing like branded or they're spamming with like sprites or something like that. And then, yeah, shift is a perfect counter argument to it. But, I mean, if your opponent's playing, like, Flunderies or something, it becomes kind of a moot point. But, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't really run into Shifter all that much. Run into Brilliant Max Seas, though, especially in Master Duel. So, like, you could literally get the Max C turn zero in Sprite. That's a thing where, like, the level actually mattered. D-Shifter is a high-level monster that's almost impossible to summon. And if a single card gets in your graveyard, it's basically dead for the whole game. Unless you're playing, like... Specifically, flew under ease. Yep, just like, like I said. Just like I said. Real downsides. And I just can't agree with that comparison. Maxi Man, is way more unbalanced than D Shift. It is. I'll especially at Master Duel. Oh, God. But there's much more to what makes Maxi more broken compared to Shifter. Some notable ones are that you can use Max C whenever you want. Yep. And draw as many times as your opponent's special summons without any sort of downside. Yep. Other than counters, which don't always justify a card to stay in the meta. Maxi itself has no downsides to it. It doesn't. But Shifter, on the other hand, does. Mm. The biggest one is that you can't use the card whenever you want, unlike Maxi. Yep. 
there will be games where people will draw shifter after turn one and it will be a dead card because now you got stuff in your graveyard what i tell you some of the downside shifter has is that you're under his effect as well so yep, it won't see? be a one-side macro cosmos before i bring up another one people will say something like gamma had a lot of downsides to it and that card still got hit which is true but one thing I mean, gamma has yeah. that shifter doesn't is that you can summon Gamma during your turn, which can lead to Synchro and Link plays. That is true. Most notably the Excel Stardust play. Story, Same thing can be said with the Ghost Sisters sometimes, <laughs> but with D-Shifter, you can't really summon the card because they made it a level 6 on, on purpose. purpose. Yeah. This is to avoid this card being abused in any other needs. So, despite what people think, D-Shifter does have downsides to it. I do believe that Konami R&D thought carefully to avoid another Max C situation, where the card is overwhelmingly busted, leading it to possibly being banned. However, one argument I know people will say is that turn 1 matters so much in Yu-Gi-Oh! and D-Shifter can win games on its own, so why do these downsides matter? That's true. The that, reason that's why a good they point. matter has to do with my final point, and that's... Point number 3. Shifter is not the problem, it's the format. To understand Ooh. this point, mm. we gotta look at another hand trap that people have wanted to ban. Droller Lockbird! <laughs> People have argued that Droll is ban worthy for the same reason as Shifter, being that their lingering effects are too oppressive. <clears throat> Though Simo, Team APS, and Joshua Smith have all argued that it's not Droll's fault, but the format he is in, as you have a lot. Mm. Uh. Hey, Twitch chat. Could you not then? I think I get the point Dark Emperor is making. So if everyone always says Droll is not the problem, it's the format that Droll's in that's busted and has too much searching. Why could you not make the same argument about Dimension Shifter? Mm. Uh, that makes some sense like, now. Dro like, Shifter's only good in this format because too much graveyard. You're dumping, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Sausage. Droll is just unfun. I mean, I don't know. Like, play a deck that doesn't search. Because Max is good in every format. <laughs> I mean, every deck searches, though. I, I get the point, though. Like, because Droll's been around for a while. But, I mean, back in the heyday of Yu-Gi-Oh!, like, not, not too far back, but, I mean, back in the day, I mean, you only had a few cards that really searched, but now, like, every card searches something that is necessary for their combo extension. Like, I think it was Performer Power, if not mistaken, that coined that phrase, a searcher for your searcher to search out your other searchers. But... I mean, every card searches, so I guess if you can't extend your combo, then you would see it as oppressive. But then again, like he said, it's the format's problem, not Droll and Lockbird. Unless the main, unless the best decks are like Sky Striker and Flu, Maxi is good in every, just like Ash, honestly. Yeah. Like, they're good in every format. So, a combo decks that much. dominate the meta. Droll However, their biggest different. weakness is that they rely on searching, which is why Droll is needed to counter them. And I can agree with Bring this, as formats where Droll was used were kind of toxic. Some examples are Tier Zero Spiral, Drytron, and most recently, Super Heavy Samurai. Mm -hmm. You're probably wondering where I'm going with this, but I believe that the same logic can be applied to Dimension Shifter in his own right. Basically, I feel like Shifter is only relevant depending on the format he is in, and this can be decided in two ways. The first way correlates with my first point. Tier. If there's a yep. graveyard-based combo deck running around the meta, people will use Shifter to counter, counter it. it. Yeah. As for the second way, it correlates with my second point. By having decks that can either play around Shifter or specialize in banishing. The reason why Shifter's downsides matter <laughs> is that not every deck can use it. That's Mainly because your own cards get banished too, too, and a lot of decks can't afford that, mm -hmm. leading to only a select few that can take advantage of it. Some examples include Exo Sisters, Vanguish Soul, and Guru Control. However, one question I have is this. Would these decks ruin the meta just because they can play Shifter? No. I believe the no. answer is no. While I do see these decks getting top cuts on high competitive levels from time to time, I don't believe they'll take over the meta just because they can play Shifter. Nah, Plus, definitely not. they can't really search Shifter and they rely heavily on the grind game to beat you. So you don't have to worry about them killing you after they shifted you. Yeah, the, yeah the that's a good point. Truth is, chat, even if you shifter in any of these three decks, it's not that insane. Like it's it's only insane in flu because they can recycle. They could just put shifter on, pack, on top, top of the deck yeah. and then they can shift shifter them again. again. So they yeah, do it, like, they keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing and it and keep doing because it because Kashira like every monster is like twenty five hundred. So Kashira Kashira can actually can pretty just kill you in one kill turn. You in yeah. one turn if you don't do anything. But it's really not like it's not really that insane in this deck in these three decks because in Vanquish Soul like 
if you shift there, you can't really even go on the rock. Otherwise, the card that you use to summon rock gets banished forever. And you can't use continue because you don't have a graveyard. So, like, it's not really that insane in this deck, to be honest. And same with I mean, this, this deck it's, can't kill it, it's, it's a, like it's a bit niche. Like I said, it's, it's so situational. It's a bit niche. And like the argument that was brought up, you can't search it. Nor can you dump it. So, it ain't even like you can just... Whoop, I got shipped about like like I said like, unless like Flunderies can do it but I mean like that's the only other deck I can think of what they said I can actually benefit from Shifter. Again, these decks are good, but they can't really take over the meta, and Shifter yeah. being at three won't help them do that. Nope. However, there are decks that have seen competitive yep, success Flunderies, and have always main deck three Shifters. Yeah, these decks can do more. Those yeah, decks can being Kashtira and Fluunderies. I will admit, these decks being able to use Shifter to their advantage is nuts. Though, I have another question for all of you. Is D-Shifter the main reason why these two decks were so dominant? If you think the answer is yes, well, I disagree, nah. and I can prove it. Look at Fluunderies. Are they still- Bro, bring- bring uh. Press 1 to bring this card back. I don't care what anyone says. Bring this card back. So, like, we can have the anti-combo combo <laughs> The anti-combo combo! <laughs> ah, cat's stupid, yo! Nah, okay, I'm sorry, man. That Flunderies Barrier Statue Lockdown, like, nah, that, that that was a bit annoying, bro. I'm not going to lie. That was a bit annoying, bro. Like, I kind of want to play, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Flunderies is already good. They don't, they, them them locking you out of any, any way to summon, period. Like, nah, son. <laughs> I just think it's so funny that, like, Flu is his... It's like a baby combo deck, but it just doesn't special so like press yeah, one that's bring crazy. this card back. Yeah. Seriously. Bring this card back. Stop capping. Still in the deck? <laughs> no. Though. Ever since the wind barrier strategy got banned, they haven't really done much <laughs> in the meta. Yeah, no, they really sure, haven't. They might have gone to top here and there, but regardless, Shifter at three isn't the main source as to why that archetype was a meta deck. It did play a part because they could use it multiple Maybe turns, like but now? it wasn't the main reason why they were so dominant in the meta. Now, moving on to the biggest effect. Oh, Kashira. Again, I gotta ask, is Shifter the main reason why this deck became the best deck of the format, or at least right now the most threatening deck? Again, no. it's not. The main reason is because these two cards, Arise Heart and number 89 Diabolos, are what made Kashira the best deck in the game. No kidding, no kidding, good God, Diabolos. Diabolos. Multiple cards from your opponent's deck, as well as take Shangri-La's zone good locking times. ability to disgusting levels. And then there's a Rizard, who has the power to gatekeep an entire format as you have to put in cards like Book of Moon to beat him. Yeah. Uh, basically, Diablos, if your deck can't beat a Rizard, then you <laughs> <laughs> bad Diablos. Not if a Rizard's running around. Oh, nah. It's so frustrating to fight against. And while Shifter does play a part, like he did in Fluunderies, he's not the main reason as to why Kashtir is the best. Listen, listen. I, I, I know. I know. I, I don't really care if I get hate or anything. I, Diablos Mind Hacker is, is such a bad card. Like I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I I gotta say it. I'm sorry. Like the fact that Konami made a card that specifically checks your deck to banish a card, it to me is insane. <laughs> like that's insane. Like imagine, imagine like the like man, imagine getting punished for playing. <laughs> That's all Cash Tira did. It punished you for playing. Like, I, like I, I promise you. I promise you. I'll be the. You, you'll be the first to hear it. I swear. There's gonna be a time. Maybe not now. Maybe not even later. But it will not surprise me. There's gonna be an archetype that basically punishes you for going into phases. I mean, we already got uh, evenly matched that punishes you for going into battle. I mean, oh, you went into your main phase one. Up, oh, car gets randomly thrown from your hand or banished. I'm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Konami's like, yo, man, the, the the power creep of cars is just astronomical, man. It's like it's like nuclear warfare. It's like in order to beat this car to certain cars, we have to have cars that beat those cars and even strong cars that can beat those cars, and it just becomes a whole a whole fluster cluck, man. It's it's disgusting. Best deck in the game. I can probably make a bet that even if Shifter didn't exist, Kashira would still be the best deck regardless it mainly would. because of these two Xyz monsters. No kidding. To wrap this video up, the point I'm trying to make here is that Shifter was never the main problem. Yes, he can be frustrating, but at the same time, he can really be a format-dependent card. And the real bigger problem is just yeah. how Yu-Gi-Oh is now. 
I said in the first point, Shifter is a necessary evil, and if TCG was going to hit him, the best I could see is semi limited. Maybe but two. I yeah. still I don't, he ain't, he ain't getting limited. Nah. Regardless, I could Maybe be wrong semi. about all this. Like in Master I just want to share my opinion on this topic as it's gotten pretty big over the years. I hope you enjoy. I mean, I, I think it's gotten really big this year. But if you if you want to look if you want to say Cap, that's not true. Shifter has been insane in every format over the last like. Uh, nah, that's a stretch. Why is Vegas chat? That was the um the first format for Photon Hypernova. I don't think Shifter was that good at that at that event chat. Like that's that's the that is the prime event that I will point to where I'll be like, because that was immediately after Tier died. And I don't think Shifter was that good. And I think, like, if you played Cash, you probably didn't even want to play Shifter in the main deck because there was so much Cash Tira, and it's not good against Labyrinth either. And, like, nope. are it, the, be the best three decks going into that event were expected to be Cash Tira, Branded, and Labyrinth. Yep. Maybe Sprite. Who knows? Yeah. But, like, Shifter is really not that good against any of those decks. I mean, maybe it's, it's okay against Brandon. Yeah, it gets Brandon. But, it, yeah. I mean, yeah, it gets Brandon. It can shut it down if it goes out bats. early. But if it um, gets Brandon, pops off. So it's this a video deal. is saying just ban all the cash cards. <laughs> like, the, the only archetype that deserves to have like all its cards banned is Tier Element. Um, Chet, I think what's it called? Because everyone was playing cash. No, well, I, I'll say I'll say this. I don't think. I mean. Kid Kalios is annoying. I feel like every tier card should be like at one. I I like if if every if every tournament card is at one, like the Ashizu cards, I think it's a bit okay. Cause I feel like it should have been like a bit of an engine instead of like sort of like how uh hmm, I'm trying to think. What card is kind of an engine? Um I can't really think at the moment, but I feel like it should be more of an engine type where you can like throw something on board real fast if you don't have anything. But the fact that Tillerman just had so much insurmountable advantage and he could do it during either player's turn, especially going first, that's why the archetype was so hated. And even to this day, I, I, I still don't like Tillerman. I really, really don't. I, have, I haven't hated an archetype as much as Tillerman since I think like performer pals at full power. Like, oh God, just okay, disgusting. Okay, but that doesn't... That doesn't disprove my point. If everyone's playing cash, then then shifter's not that good. Then it's really I mean, not. It wasn't like cash was tier zero at the event, but uh, yeah, chat. I have to be honest. Did you did you guys find this video compelling? Yay or nay? I, I, I do. I like it. Excellent video. I do. Like, he it's made funny. some excellent Certain points. Certain Yu-Gi-Oh cards, chat, have an intended purpose. That's let true. Let them eat cake. <laughs> let them like, eat let cake. a Yu-Gi-Oh card do its job. <laughs> It was supposed to prevent graveyard dumping and slow down combo decks. That's the entire point. It's not Shifter's fault that your stupid Dragon Link deck dies because you can't <laughs> use graveyard. <laughs> hey, I bet there probably is some got bad. Man, I don't like Shifter, man. I can't dump 25 cards in the grave. <laughs> man. That ain't fair, man. I just want to dump like 20, 30 cars in the grave. That, that ain't, man. I don't like Shifter. Like, bruh, I ain't about to sit up here and watch you play solitary and watch you just dump cars in your grave for like five minutes straight. That gets annoying, bruh. I'm like, I'll be honest. And I play combo decks. I love Branded. And sometimes I'll play Dragon Link. But I'm not going to lie. Like, sitting there watching somebody just dump cars in the grave, recycle, dump cards, recycle, dump cards for like five minutes straight. While you're just playing solitary or playing minesweeper, that that gets really, really annoying. Just, just saying, just, just saying. Uh, find different combo lines. You know what I mean? I actually shifted a, I shifted a Dragon Link player with Vanquish Soul, and he literally just he had like he had like five cards and Chaos Space and all this shit. And he just ended on Seal Pass. <laughs> 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 and I summoned Fenrir and just waxed his ass. <laughs> It was, it was actually hilarious. Uh, um, that's funny, yo. Shifter is fine. Uh, cash. But I feel like that's your that's your fault for not having, you know, I'm 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 not trying to do Yu-Gi-Oh joke like just draw the out, bro. But I feel like you should make a deck where you you can't you can't you know prepare for everything, but you should have some kind of a backup plan for your deck in case things go south. Like if you're playing, if you're playing a combo deck, and you're like, well, dang, he might have shifter. I might have to play something where I can like summon a monster or two, and then have like a 
a, you know, a trap card or two face down or something. Have some kind of, you know, alternative in case things take a turn for the worse. If you're just playing the same flow chart deck and just try to do something and your opponent throws a, you know, a ball in your court or a pothole in the road and now your deck's just basically dead because of something like that, you're screwed. <laughs> so, so, I mean, come on, man. You got to think outside the box sometimes. Think, Shinteria, think. Man, two of the best, two of the, two of the least fun archetypes uh, printed in my opinion. Here's my, I think, I think that you can, I think that that's fine to have that opinion. My, yeah, it's fine. The Kiba? I just think it's a problem when everyone acts like Tyr was the epitome of Yu-Gi-Oh! And Cash Tira was the lowest point of Yu-Gi-Oh! Nah. People act like they are complete polar opposites. Like Tier format is the greatest the game has ever been. Cash format is the worst the game's ever been. And it's pretty much just off the back of like two pro players and one Yugi tuber. <laughs> it's like, God, this community is so I even like I don't even like Tier Lament. Like, man. can like, you have honestly. your own can you form an, your own opinion? Like neither if you want to say like, oh, they're both draw the out. Uh, they're both like unfun. Both decks are broken. I mean, I, I just man, I, they they kind of are. Was man. so much more broken than cash. I don't even it it was, bro. Like at least with cash, if you pop the monsters, you you were good. To, you were good to go. I've beaten plenty of cash tier players just drawing Brageki or Dark Hole and it just go oh until it's their next time. Tournament, you don't get that because if uh, if they don't already have in the gate when they go to the grave, let's pop it out again. So you you basically done nothing. <laughs> In fact, you might have done them a favor. But like, oh, thanks. They just rubbing their hands like Birdman. Like, you did me a, you did me a favor. <laughs> You've accomplished nothing except your own demise. Like, no, man, I don't like tournaments, especially at full power. I don't. I could explain it. I mean, you could try. I just, I don't, I don't think having a quarter of my deck milled during my opponent's turn, <laughs> zero, them setting up Omni Negates and Floodgates is very fun. That, see, see, that's why I like Cap. That's why I like Cap. He tells it how it is. I've been following this guy for like, what, 11, 12 years? That, that's how it is. How is that fun? How is that the epitome of Yu-Gi-Oh? In my opinion, Yu-Gi-Oh went downhill after Pendulums came out. Like when Pendulums showed up, I was like, bro, this ain't even the same game anymore. And these guys are saying, old oh, man, Tillamence was like, no! Who told you that? Tillamence? Y'all Everyone tripping. will say there are no floodgates in in tier format until you tell them the floodgates and then they just ignore it right <laughs> they say oh there are no floodgates in tier format cap number one number number 41 uh uh baguska abyss yep. dweller this dweller dimension shift dimension shift three floodgates i just named they're all prominent in tier format yep what's your response like there 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 are there's tons of floodgates in tier format and half of them are in the extra deck so it makes it even worse mm -hmm. jerome not letting cash live for seven or jerome letting cash I mean, what, they they did try hitting cash twice. They just weren't in like. And, and by the way, chat, it's the hold on. Cash not cash still being the best deck. Whose fault is that, Twitch chat? Whose fault is it that cash tier is still the best deck? I'm gonna tell you, and you guys are not gonna like it. I'm gonna tell you, you guys aren't gonna like it. Mm. And drinking sweet water. If you're in the Mortal Kombat, be careful. Spoilers are uh, out due to early copies. It's Jerome's. No, it's the Yu-Gi-Oh community's fault, chat. Because what did everyone say after the Photon Hypernova um, format, chat? Everyone's ah, zone lock, zone lock, <laughs> and mind hacker. And what did Konami do, chat? What did Konami do when everyone was saying ban mind hacker? They ban mind hacker. And everyone was like, "Yo, problem solved." And then Cash was still the best deck. So whose fault was it really, Chat? <laughs> whose fault was it really, Chat? Everyone was like, "Yo, ban mind hacker." This is the problem. It's like, uh, or you, maybe it's a rise heart. I don't know. But everyone said ban mind hacker, and Konami banned mind hacker. Surprise! I mean, That's I don't actually I, the reason Caster is the best dad. I mean, Cash was already good. Mind hacker just made it worse. So I can understand. I just don't like the fact that Cash's entire spill is just punishing me for playing. But I will say though that my hacker, my like my my hacker is sort of like <sighs> my my hacker is like pouring alcohol on an open wound. Like it hurts, but you know once it heals up, it's pretty much good. 
I guess that's why everybody hated it. I mean, I didn't dislike it because it didn't just let me play. But, I mean, it had no protection, couldn't do anything, which pretty much all cash have. They have no protection. So, once you regeki them, that pretty much comes a moot point anyway. But still, you know, good video, though. I like it. Thanks, Cap.